Hi everyone, I'm Chris from Race Car Camp. Just want to say thank you for coming back for part two of the Miata engine build. In this video, we'll be reassembling the head, and in the next video, we'll be disassembling the block, checking for tolerances, and then assembling the block. And before you know it, this motor will be done. Enjoy the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Now we finally get to start putting parts back on. Uh, we're gonna start with the valve stem seals. They go on the post that we just put those rings around, and it feels good to be putting parts back on instead of taking them off. There are two different valve stem colors. One is green and one is gray. The gray has a larger diameter. So we're going to put gray with a slightly larger diameter on the intake side, and green with a slightly smaller diameter on the exhaust side. Okay, valve stem seals aren't terribly complicated and they do make a bunch of special tools for this if you would like to use them, but also a 10 millimeter works just fine. Here's the seal, that's a fresh one, and for comparison, here's what we took out. So you can see how crusty they get and how they might go bad. You can also see how large the hole has been around the valve stem. I like to just put a dab of oil on each one to help everything seat. This is my old school <laughs> oiler. Um, very simple, just gonna add a dab. And we simply take 10 mil valve seat and line it up. And that's it. You get a little satisfying pop when they're on. And that's all she wrote. Repeat for all your valves. When you do this, be sure to use only enough pressure to barely hold on to the valve seals with the needle nose pliers. You're just setting the seal on the post and then you push it on with the 10 millimeter. Next, I'll show you how the valves go into the head because you can't really see it from the angle we're at. So here is your valve. And these are the keepers. Keepers are tapered and they lock in on this collar on the valve. All right. This will come over. These lock in on the collar on the valve. And then when you release the spring, that locked in collar is what holds it in. So the method that I have decided works best is called the grease method. And what you're gonna do is get a little bit of synthetic grease and you put some on the inside of the keeper and a dab on the outside of the keeper and then fish it down onto the valve and watch. It'll stick right in that groove for you which is the only way you can release the spring inside this tiny little chamber. At least I did seven valves in the amount of time it took me to do one without the grease. So this is the official way I'm doing the rest of them. I wanted to show you one. I'm gonna try and get it so you can see what I'm working on. Valve, dab of oil, You see I cleaned them up. Insert into head. The new valve seal should hold it. Spring, shim, brass brush, kerosene, quick scrub. Not doing anything more than knocking the sludge off. Not trying to get this back to, you know, brand new show car valve train here. Brake cleaner, breaks down the kerosene. 
dab it clean on the rag. Blow. You see it actually looks like a nice metal instead of something all carbon. Drop on the valve. It sits in the seat here. Grab the shims. Brake cleaner on the shims. I'm sorry, keepers, not shims. Grease. Dab on the inside. Sticks on the outside. Spring compressor. Try and give you room on either side, point it away. So see I can come in from this way and this way. Gonna point it away from the cam bearing ledge. Make sure we're lined up on the valve to not scar our aluminum. Compress. Keep her on a stick. Comes over, sticks on the valve. She's stuck. Get the other one. Keep her on a stick. And now I'm gonna rotate it a little so I can come on the other side of our contraption. Stick. They're in there, I hope you can see that. And then as we let go, they are stuck in. And that was two hours of my life I'll never get back. But I think I could do the next one in about 35 minutes. So you can see this one doesn't have any grease. I did that with tweezers. That one alone took probably 30 minutes. All the others, I don't know what was that, four or five minutes. Um, but of course I got really good at the last one. So you can see our head is way more clean than it was. This will be the last bit to go on when I'm going to sleep. All right. so. Gonna finish putting everything in. Um, yesterday we finished up all the valves, so I don't need my valve tool, but I'm gonna use the book because I don't know all the torque specs off the top of my hand. So we're gonna put the lifters um, back in in the order they came out, which is why we labeled them. Then we'll put the cams in and then the caps. Caps only go in one way and in one order, facing one direction or you'll crack them as I often make with the bearing surfaces. Now that the valve and keepers are all installed, I'm going to tap them with a hammer and a rounded off socket end just to give them a chance to vibrate into place one last time before revving as the motor turns on. Now it's finally time to install the hydraulic lifters. What we're going to do here is just wipe down each one, check for any obvious scoring or damage, and then insert them back in the order that they came out. Use plenty of assembly lube here as this will be the last area to really get oil once you turn the motor on. A big thank you to Midwest Miata Parts who basically sponsored this video by donating all of the pieces going back into this motor build for the Force raffle car. If you're interested in that, head over there or head over to Force's website. I'll have links in the description. With the lifters installed, it's time to finally move on to the cam. Now ours has been sitting out of the motor for a little while and so it's starting to get some surface oxidation. It's no big deal, we'll use a little bit of wet sandpaper and some kerosene from our bucket and just smooth out the surfaces. Now remember, we're not reshaping anything, you're barely even scuffing this, but just enough to knock the rust off before you go to reinstall. And if your cam is still smooth and clean, you don't need to do this step at all. Before placing the cam, use plenty of assembly lube on all the bearing surfaces. 
and the tops of your lifters too. Before we install the bearing caps, I want to be sure I pick them up in order, one at a time, and clean all of the old sludge and deposits off of each one. I'm going to use my brass brush and the kerosene bucket and just brush everything off. Again, we're not reshaping anything, we're just getting rid of the dirt, trying to clean everything off. Blow it off with brake cleaner, dry it off with your microfiber towel, and then you could even use a little compressed air at the end to just be sure you get all the lint out and install them in the same order you took them off, in the same orientation. The first bearing cap gets a thin, consistent coat of RTV. It seals off the area between the cam gear and the inside of the head. We put it on finger tight before moving on to the next bearing cap. All the subsequent bearing caps are cleaned in the same way, one at a time, in order from front to back. Brass brush, a little bit of kerosene, a little bit of brake cleaner, microfiber, a little bit of compressed air. Don't forget assembly lube on the underside of every cap before you finger tighten them. And now literally wash, rinse, repeat before we torque everything down. Remember, we're just putting everything on hand tight for now. I use a quarter inch ratchet before the torque wrench just to get everything hand tight. And then I'll chase everything with the torque wrench. Note the pattern here of torquing everything down. You do the inside cap first, then the two on either side, and then the two furthest out from that. You must go in order or you risk cracking your cam caps. The process is exactly the same for the intake side of things. We're gonna wash, rinse, repeat all the cam caps. You're gonna use a little glue on that first cap, and then you gotta be sure you use assembly lube throughout. I'm not going to outline every single step here because we just did it on the exhaust side. So if you have to rewind, simply rewind, go back and do it on the intake side. Next up is the thermostat neck and housing. My camera died so I don't have it on video. Assembly is just opposite of disassembly. So be sure to use your new gasket from your Mazda kit. I'm going to show you again one of my more favorite tools. This is an oil seal. It goes on the cam. We've now got everything reassembled sits on here with a little bit of oil from my old school oil can. And then this cam seal installer is machine aluminum. Find me out and make some, they're amazing. We reuse the OEM bolt and washer. It threads on. And then it pushes the seal in proportionately, evenly, uh, so that you don't get uh, warping. And it goes on because of the machining. So once it stops, it's all the way installed. Normally you hit this with a mallet and a you know, 32 millimeter socket or whatever that is. There, we're at the stop, which means our seal is installed. And it is seriously that easy. I don't even remember what they sell these for. They don't charge enough money. That's how good of a tool it is. The backing plate goes on next, and again, my camera was dead, so I apologize. I've just reversed the disassembly video for you. Your gasket kit should have a fresh U-gasket that goes over the thermostat neck on that backing plate. Just be sure to switch that out if yours is bad. With the plate installed, we can move on to the timing gears. The intake and exhaust cam gears, they're interchangeable. I marked mine just to make it easy so I knew which one I was talking about. So you see the I and the E. Um, there's a little dowel um, under uh, each gear that keeps the gear aligned. You put those dowels at uh, 12 o'clock or top center, 
and then you just put the appropriate gear on each one and you'll notice it'll be hard to make out but now the E aligns with here and the E aligns with there on the timing mark so when you go for reassembly this is close enough to top dead center I'll have to I'll have to you know rotate these a tooth or so over and lock them in okay so on the cam angle sensor um, this little widgery do flies around goes in the notch there in the cam and tells the computer where it is in terms of timing the seal on this thing was so crusty look it's not even rubber anymore it turned into plastic i just had to show you that symptoms of this are a whole bunch of oil leaking down the back of the head which this car had it kind of had oil leaking everywhere but new ring comes in the mazda kit goes on sensor goes in no big deal oil makes the world go round I get to cheat right now, so I can actually see everything. And we're in. No big deal. Sorry, my batteries died when I was changing out everything, so be sure you put a new gasket in between the neck and the housing before you put your thermostat back in. And I'm just gonna reverse the clip so you got everything in order in case you're following along. That's it for the head assembly video. I hope you found it useful. Please consider liking and subscribing so you can get notified when we release the block teardown video.